Of course, I really want my child to be by my side if possible, but it won't be safe. I don't have any regrets, but it still breaks my heart. Women have played a prominent role in the opposition to Myanmar's military coup, leading the protests and the civil disobedience movement. Many women have also joined the armed resistance, but some who are mothers have had to make huge sacrifices to do so. Hello and welcome to Do Athan, a weekly podcast that brings you human rights stories from Myanmar. It's brought to you by Fondation Hirondelle. This episode is produced by a Do Athan freelance journalist. Names may have been changed to protect contributors. There is equal treatment to both genders here. You won't be spared because you are a woman. We are our soldiers and that means we all have to pull our own weight. We have to set our own tents, dig our own waste pits, both men and women. We don't receive more opportunity just because we are women either. Makati is in her 20s. Before February 2021, she worked in hospitality and was not politically active. She joined protests against the military coup, and after the crackdown, she decided to join a people's defence force in a remote jungle location. She got military training, along with about 20 other women in that batch. They had to endure the same hardships as their male counterparts. Makati once fainted from exhaustion. Living conditions are poor, and many developed stomach problems. After graduating, Makethi worked training new recruits. In this tough jungle camp, she found romance with another PDF soldier. They got married, and then she got pregnant. What should have been a blessing became a complication. Could she raise a child in a military camp? During her pregnancy and while she was nursing the baby, she was assigned to office tasks. But it was difficult to get medicine and other supplies for the baby, and Makethi suffered from depression. Her husband was on the front lines and didn't see their daughter until she was six months old. Recently, she has had to make the painful decision to give her daughter to relatives to look after for her safety. Of course, I really want my child to be by my side, if possible, but it won't be safe. If something bad were to happen to me when I'm away, because I walk around guns and bullets, anything could happen to both me and my husband. As a mother, I worry about the possibility of my baby becoming an orphan. Lots of mothers joined the revolution. Ma'i is a single mother. She left her 12-year-old son with her mother when she decided to take up arms. I don't have any regrets, but it still breaks my heart. As a mother, I feel sorry for not being there with my child. It makes me question if I'm being a good mother. When it comes to family, I do feel bad. Sometimes I feel guilty. Ma'i is in her late 30s and was politically active even before the coup. After the crackdown on protests, she felt she had no choice but to join the armed revolution. The military commanders almost rejected her because she has a disability, which makes it hard for her to walk. When they assessed me, they seemed doubtful and told me it might not be possible. They suggested I bathe in the river near the mountain base, en route to the camp. They said they would consider me if I could make it back to the camp. Climbing back up was tough and I almost gave up halfway. I was exhausted and crying. But I persisted and made it back to the camp. Ma'i has leadership skills and experience from before the coup and has been in the armed resistance for over two years. But she is currently supporting the frontline soldiers in a communications role. 
Nan Momo, General Secretary of the Women's League of Burma, says that women's strengths are not always recognised in the resistance, as in other sectors of society. Women in our patriarchal society are dealing with some major challenges. Their participation and contributions often get overlooked. And there's a shortage of programs that actually support women. It's like people don't even get why gender equality and women's involvement is important. And you know how tough it is for women to really get a seat at the decision-making table, even when they're in the game. Nor Susanna Lala So is the NUG Minister for Women, Youth and Children's Affairs. She says that there have been complaints of discrimination by some women in the People's Defence Forces. Women PDFs complained about not participating in battles on the front lines, and they also complained they were not given the same responsibilities and duties as men. So we have discussed these issues with the Ministry of Defence as much as we can. Not that either Ma'i or Maketi is complaining. Despite the challenges, Ma'i remains determined. I will not bow down or surrender. I will not live under the military boots. Even if it means sacrificing my personal needs, I will not abandon this revolution. But both women are making huge personal sacrifices by continuing on this path. Ma'i has only seen her son once since she joined the PDF more than two years ago. It was when he became a novice at a monastery. I had to come back because I really wanted to be there for my son becoming a novice for the first time. But my relative told me not to, as it could ruin the event, and I was devastated. I was determined to be there for my son, so I travelled a long way and went through several checkpoints with one big hope in mind. Ma'i got to a place not far from the monastery and a friend brought her son to see her. They had just 45 minutes together. As for Maketi, she has just left her 10-month-old baby with relatives. She doesn't know when she'll be able to see her again. Is this not possible to bring her back? Because is this not easy for us to travel like this? Sagasa also has our names on record. So is it risky for us to move around freely? So if we were to leave, it would mean we can only come back once the revolution has succeeded. That can't come too soon for Maketi. She dreams of a more peaceful future. When I think about what I truly want at the end of all this, is it that I want to live a peaceful life with my family, my husband who I met during this revolution and our daughter? I don't want us to be separated like this anymore. I dream of living in a country where we all have full human rights and I can live happily with my family. We hope you enjoyed this edition of Dota Than. You can listen to our podcast via the Dota Than Facebook page. It can also be found on SoundCloud, YouTube and iTunes. You can also listen every Saturday night from 9 to 10 p.m. and Sunday morning from 6 to 7 a.m. on Voice of America Radio. The project to support human rights reporting is delivered by Fondacion Hirondel and it's made with the support of our donors. <laughs>